What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is the big reveal. You may recall earlier this year, I migrated from the M10 to the M10R, shared it all right here. Had a little mishap with it in the beginning, but it's been a great camera and I've put like thousands of accusations on the shutter this year and then I had this issue which I shared about right here you can watch this video and I ended up picking up an M11 while the M10R is getting repaired and the question was gonna be as I got into the fall after I got to experience the M11 and I, I know the M10R very well which camera would I keep and which one would be sold off well today is the big reveal and it's gonna come as absolutely no surprise to 99% of you, I am going to stick it out with the M11 moving forward. But it's not for the reasons you may think. Let me go ahead and just restate what was true of my M10R decision over the M11, which is the M11 has things I do not necessarily need, like the resolution size is greater than my needs are, and as I shared, I do personally prefer to have something that's kind of like at the end of an era instead of the beginning of a new one because it takes a while to work out bugs and technical issues. But I'm happy to report that the production of the M11 that I received was a later production, a newer production, because I just recently got it. And I have experienced absolutely zero issues. No freezing, no lockup no shutter delay, like nothing. I've had no issues whatsoever. So the M11 has been an awesome experience for me. And I just did an entire trip on the M11. I shared the video just recently and it's been like probably one of my most well-received videos. I said it was one of my most ambitious videos ever on my Instagram. And I meant that because it was very long and it was across several locations, different weather. I was shooting between the Sony and the iPhone trying to like just get the camera that was working in the moment. But that video was all about my journey with the M11 around Olympic National Park and it was just incredible. So here are the three reasons that I am choosing the M11 over the M10R and I'm selling off the M10R. So here is the first reason, and that is the freaking battery life on the M11 is unreal. Just as a quick example, I have three M10R batteries. It takes me three batteries on a typical day to get through the day, and I've even had all three batteries die on me. I shot the M11 all day, like all day. Checked the battery at the end of the day, and it wasn't even half used. That blew my mind. I have three batteries for one camera, and I went multiple days on a single charge on the M11. That, people, is a game changer. So the battery life is unreal on the M11, especially if you're coming off of these little M10R or M10, M10P, whatever. If you're coming off of that camera system, this is a very new experience and how you manage your batteries. And not carrying three batteries and just having the one in the body, that was pretty awesome. Reason number two, I would say may even tie with reason number one, is that the M11 is the first M Leica to meter off of the sensor all the time. So the M10R, the M10P, the M10, they would monitor off of the sensor if you were using live view. Otherwise, it was using a traditional light meter, which was basically spot in the middle. It was like a film camera, which if you shoot a lot of film, which I do on the M6, it's kind of a fun experience to shoot them both using the same type of metering. That said, the M10 line for me was always exposed a little off from where I thought it might be. So when it says it was metered correctly, it was very easy if you were in a high contrast scenario to underexpose the photo. And I don't mean like by like a half stop, I mean like a full two stops even. Like if I was taking a photo in my living room and it was bright outside, if I didn't have the center spot in the right place, then it would expose for the window and the room would be black. What's great about the M11 is that the metering is coming off of the sensor like a more traditional mirrorless camera, which almost sounds like counter what you want in an M because the M is like this incredible fully manual experience, but having an accurate 
like perfectly accurate meter was amazing. Like the more I shot this, the more I realized how much that meter makes a difference. And you couple that meter with a, a lot of dynamic range where your highlights are retained and you got great shadow recovery. A great exposure made editing just so much easier and honestly like more efficient. And time is money when you're running a creative business. So the meter is a incredible experience on the M11 compared to the prior M cameras. Honestly, like those two reasons enough were for me to make the decision on the M11. And it was the metering and the battery that were like, okay, I, I can't go back to the M10R now. The M11 is gonna be my camera. But there's one more reason why I am keeping the M11. And it's so funny to say it because it was the biggest reason I didn't want the M11. And that was the removal of the base plate. I just love that classic Leica base plate, the one on the bottom that lets you pop out the film and on the M10 line, take out the battery and the SD card. That experience is like part of Leica. And I was really hesitant because I didn't think I would enjoy the, I don't know, just, it feels too new. It doesn't feel like the heritage of Leica. Once I started using this and like, I can get the SD card out so incredibly easy and fast and not have to monkey with the base plate, pop the battery back in and I'm good to go. Ah, I can't see myself going back. I think I'm pretty sold at this point. The battery, the metering, and the efficiency of getting the SD card in and out of this camera, especially like along the way when I'm checking images on the go, that's pretty cool. Now I'll add a bonus reason, a fourth reason. The noise performance at a high ISO truly blew my mind. So we recently went on a trip to Disneyland to take the kids down there and I took the M11 with the 35 Sumalux and last time we went, I took my Q2 and I shot them both in some of the rides when it was really dark and I was just seeing how they performed at a high ISO. The M11, when you push the ISO, it looks super filmic. Even like the highlights bloom into the noise. It's It, it, it truly looks as if you're shooting with, a, with film. Like I, I can't describe it any other way, but that halation across the noise looks so good. I was in the Haunted Mansion and you can see it from these photos right here. These are not edited straight out the camera and the value of the ISO is listed right, right below on the photo. You can get an idea of how clean the performance is. Now here's a comparison to the Q2 on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, which is also very dark, but look at the difference. Like look at just straight out of the camera before any noise reductions applied. It's pretty freaking amazing. And while this isn't a deal breaker for me because I don't really shoot high ISO too often, I mean, I mostly shoot in daylight. And so I'm not out at night a ton. I'm not shooting weddings and wedding venues, but I was blown away at the noise performance of the M11. So those are the reasons I've decided to stick it out with the M11. Many of you made the call when I first said I would decide later this fall. Well, it's October. It's not even late into the fall. The decision has been made. The M10R will be sold off. If you would like the M10R, shoot me a DM on Instagram and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm gonna be listing it here sometime soon and getting that thing sold off and finding it a new home. I've been having this incredible journey with Leica this year and I'm finally starting to land the plane on it. And so I'm thinking about the future of this channel, what's next. I would love to hear what you would love to see because I'm starting to now dial in my kit. I've got my lenses dialed in. Now I feel like I've got my camera dialed in and I'm excited to see what will come next. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you want to see on this channel. Give me any feedback. I'm always open to your feedback. I try to respond to every comment. And while that's getting a little more complicated as this channel has grown, I'm still pressing through on it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below and I will see you next time.